Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to apply conditional formatting to points in a chart by testing their values. We'll start with a quick recap of how to create a basic chart using VBA code, and then show you how you can loop through the points collection and why this approach doesn't allow you to test the value of the points. We'll show you how you can capture the array of all the values from a series of points and then how to loop through that array, testing the values before you can apply formatting to each point in turn. We'll finish the video by showing you how you can loop through charts which contain multiple data series so that you can conditionally format every single point in the entire chart. So let's get started. To get started, we'll need some sample data from which to create a chart. It really doesn't matter too much about what data you use. I'm going to create a list of months by typing in the month and name of January, and then use the autofill handle to drag that down to complete the list of 12 months. Then in the next column, I'm going to write in a column heading of value one, and then below that, I'm going to use a function to calculate a random number. So I'm going to type in equals rand between. I can then pass in the bottom and top values I want to generate. So I'm going to go for 1, 20. And when I press enter, that will generate a random number between 1 and 20. I can then simply double click the autofill handle to fill that formula downwards, and I'll get a different random number in each cell. If you don't like the set of numbers you've got, you can recalculate the worksheet by pressing F9 on the keyboard, so you'll generate a new set of random numbers. And that will happen as well whenever you type something into a cell, for example, or you remove a value from a cell. The rand between function is volatile, so it continues to recalculate as you do other things. If you want to stop that behavior, the simplest thing to do is highlight the list of numbers, copy them, and then paste the values of those cells. So that will clear the rand between function and stop those numbers from recalculating. Next, we can head into the Visual Basic Editor from the Developer tab in the ribbon, insert a new module into the project, and then create a new subroutine. Let's call this one Format Columns. Now we can add the code which will create a new chart, set its data source, and change its type. So let's start by declaring a variable which gives us a reference to the chart that we'll create. I'm going to say dim c as chart. I can then say set c equals this workbook dot charts dot add to generate a new chart object. I can then modify properties of that chart by doing things like setting its data source. So c dot set data source, or sorry, set source data. Beg your pardon, I got that the wrong way around. I can then reference the range of cells that I want to use to populate that chart. So that's everything from the table on sheet one, starting at cell A1. A simple way to reference that would be to say something like worksheets sheet one dot range A1 dot current region. Finally, I want to set the type of chart. So I'm going to say C dot chart type and then change that property to be equal to an Excel column clustered. It's going to be a basic column chart. Having done all that, let's just run the subroutine to check that what we've done so far works and makes sense. And if we switch back to Excel, that looks like a fairly sensible basic looking chart. What I'd like to do next is format any column in this chart which has a value of greater than 10. If you know much about VBA already, you'll be familiar with the concept of looping through collections using for each loops. And there is a points collection belonging to a series object in a chart in Excel. So you might reasonably assume that you can loop through the points collection, check the value property, and then change one of the formatting properties if it exceeds 10. Um, that's what I assumed as well, but sadly you can't make it work that way. Let me just show you that that's the case. I'm going to remove this chart because I don't want to end up with lots and lots of charts as I test this code as I go through the video. And then if I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, let's look at looping through the points collection. Let's declare a couple of extra variables to help with this. Firstly, I'm, I'm going to declare a variable called s, and this is going to hold a reference to a series. Then we'll have another variable called p as a point. 
after we've finished setting up the chart, I'm going to set S to be equal to C dot series collection. And I'm going to refer to the first series in the chart we've created. As it stands at the moment, the chart only contains a single series, but it's useful to have a variable to reference it to help with the IntelliSense in the next stage. Once we've got a reference to the series object, we can write a for each loop, which we'll say for each P in S dot points. So the points method returns a collection of all the points in the single series in the chart. This is just a standard for each loop, so we can say next P. And then if I wanted to write out some kind of information about each point, I can have a look at the IntelliSense list by saying P dot. And I'll see a list of methods and properties, as you might expect. Um, if I scroll through the list, I can see things like data labels. So I could see what value uh, is written on top of the column. If I added data labels to the column, I could look at the formatting properties, the explosion for an exploded pie chart, etc. But one thing I won't find in this list, really strangely, is I won't find a value property, either an X value or a Y value. And what I would ideally like to do is check if p dot value is greater than 10, but sadly I can't. So this is why we can't use this particular approach to conditionally format the columns in the chart. As it happens, the values of all of the points are held in an array, which we can access using a property of the series object. We have other videos already which explain how arrays work in detail, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here and now, just enough to make this technique work. Let's start by declaring an array variable. I'm going to call mine values array. And what we're going to do is use this to capture the array of values from the series object. I'm not going to assign a type to the values array, I'm going to leave it as a variant. And then after I've captured a reference to the series object, I'm going to say values array equals s dot values. Just to give a brief idea about what happens when this instruction is executed, let's head to the view menu and choose locals window. And then we can click into the subroutine and use the F8 key to begin stepping through it. So you can see that when I begin the procedure, I get my values array listed as empty, but it could contain anything. It's, it's a variant array, so it could contain anything eventually. I'll continue stepping through to create the chart and set its source data and its type and so on. And when I reach this instruction to assign the values property of the series object to the array, I'll see that in the locals window, my array has been populated with 12 values indexed from 1 to 12. If I want to see what those values are, I can expand this list and then see the list of values individually listed in the locals window. If I compare those to, uh, to what are in the workbook, I can have a quick look back at sheet 1. The same list here is shown here. Let's just stop stepping through this one. That's enough demonstration just for the moment. What we want to do now is loop through the values in that array. And that means we can completely remove our for each loop and replace it with a different type of loop altogether. To loop through the array of values, we'll use a for next loop. And in order to do that, we'll need some kind of counter variable. So I'm going to go back to my list of variables and declare a new one, which I'm going to call n as long. What we can then do is write a for next loop. Now, a for next loop, if you remember from previous videos, allows you to say for your counter variable for n equals and then the lowest number to the highest number. So we've just seen that our array contains a list of 12 values. The first value is indexed as the number one and this, the last value is indexed as the number 12. So that would allow us to loop over an array of a fixed size of 12. However, we can't guarantee that our array will always be the same size. We might add more results to the table or remove some. So instead of referring to the, uh, to the numbers as constants like so, we can use a couple of functions designed to test the lowest and highest value in an array. So I'm going to use a function called lbound to find the lowest index number in the values array to ubound values array to find the index number of the highest element in the array. 
just to close the loop off I'm going to say next n which will make it count up by one incrementing the value of the counter and moving on to the next item. What I can now do is access a single value in the array by saying if values array and then passing in the index number of the item that I want to access. So I'm going to use my counter variable to do that. I can then check if that value is greater than 10, then, and I'm just going to give myself a blank line or two and say end if. At this point, what I'd like to do is capture a reference to the point in the points collection whose index number is equal to the value of n. So what I'm going to do now is say set p equal to s dot points open some parentheses and then pass in the value of n to capture a reference to the point corresponding to the value. All that remains now is to choose some kind of formatting options to apply to points which meet our condition. So we can do that by referring to our p variable and then accessing the format property to give us access to a variety of formatting options. You're welcome to explore some of the more exciting sounding ones in your own time, things like glow effects and shadows, etc. I'm going to keep it simple for now. I'm going to refer to the fill property and then I'm going to apply a four colour using an RGB setting. I'm going to make it equal to some, I don't know, horrible shade of bright green. Let's go for RGB lime, for example. Just before I run this subroutine, I'm going to remove the previous chart that I created. So back into Excel, I can find my chart and choose to delete it. And then if I go back to the VB editor, I can run this subroutine and end up with a new chart who should have data points colored in according to the value of the column. So that's all working quite neatly. But what if we have a chart which has more than one single data series in it? If we return to sheet one, we could add a couple of extra columns to our chart. So let's say, sorry, our, our table. Let's say we wanted to have values two and three, and then we can use another equals rand between function to generate another number between one and 20. And then we can enter that formula. We can fill it across to the right and then double click to fill it downwards. So we get another new set of random numbers. Again, you can press F9 to recalculate these if you wanted to get some different numbers. And when you're happy, you can copy that table of numbers and then choose to paste values so that they don't continue recalculating. What we can then do is run our code again just to have a quick look at what we end up with. If I go to my Visual Basic Editor, run the subroutine again, we'll have a brand new chart with three different series, one for value one, one for value two, and one for value three. But hopefully you can see here that we've only colored in columns in series one with the greater than 10 conditional format. The fairly simple solution to this problem is to add another loop to our code, which loops over the series collection. So let's head back into the Visual Basic Editor. We already have a variable called s. Rather than setting s to be equal to a specific series, what we can do instead is replace that line with a for each loop. So we can say for each s in c dot series collection. Just to make our code a little neater, I'm going to highlight all the lines below it and then press tab to indent those one space. And then at the end of that section, I can say next S to move on to the next series. So I'm just going to go back to Excel and quickly clear these two charts that we already have. And then if I were to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, run the subroutine again, I'll end up with a new chart. And this time it will have lots and lots of horribly brightly green coloured columns. Um, I suspect you'll want to play around with the formatting options to create something a little bit nicer looking than the one that I have. But hopefully the code that I've shown you gives you some useful ideas as to how you can conditionally format items in a chart. Thanks for watching. See you next time.